Good morning. It's nice to see you here today on Installation Sunday. And then actually probably about half of you will be up here <laughs> in a little bit, but that's, that's wonderful. 
Um, Hans uh, asked me to share this with you, and I'm gladly doing so. Um, over next door uh, at the Smithsonian, there's um, the Crossroads program, and Hans and Carlos. Yes, Hans and Carlos will be over there at one o'clock. They'll be there uh, today, uh, playing. Of course, why am I saying this? They're going to be playing music. Uh, so one o'clock today, Wednesday at one o'clock, um, the fifteenth at one o'clock, and um, the twenty-second, I believe, at um, it starts at twelve thirty, according to this. So if you're in the neighborhood and you want to listen to a little bit of guitar and um, wind instruments, you are more than welcome to join us. Saxophone. It, okay, I didn't know if there was anything other than the sax. We were gonna. <laughs> He plays so many things, I don't know he was going to limit himself to the saxophone. Um, so, so that's it. Um, does anybody have any announcements that they'd like to? Yes, Kathy. But now I look at my notes. Also, starting January 19th at 6.30 p.m., we are going to start the. Um, we're going to start a screening of the second season of The Chosen. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen any of that or not. It's very wonderful. It it gives you a whole new perspective on on how to look at Jesus. I'm not saying take this as literal and factual, um, but it it opens up a door. And if you're interested, you can go on YouTube um, and go to like uh, The Chosen Season 1 and just go into some of those episodes. I think you'd be relatively um, uh, pleased with what you saw. And also there's good tie-ins of Old Testament as well as New Testament. Um, I know that for myself, I basically do things all from the New Testament. Yes, we do have an Old Testament. but. This one, this ties it a lot together, and um, I think that's important that we understand uh, a good, good part of where we come from. So, if you're available, starting the 19th, 6:30 p.m., ladies' parlor. Um, it would be nice to have you because we we do watch, and then we kind of sit down and and we talk a little bit, maybe break out our Bibles and our study Bibles, and kind of discuss some of what what had happened. Okay, I'm sorry now, is there anybody else that has any announcements to make? Uh, okay. Coffee hour this morning downstairs. Thank you. All right. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on um, in, in our church family. We've got uh, We've got some people that are suffering that are, that are having a, a tough time of it. Um, and I know that usually I light the celebration candle uh, for other things, but it just seems that, that a, lot of, a lot of stuff has been hitting the fan. And, um, and I want us to keep in mind uh, those things that we know about, those friends that we, we know about, and, and for those that we don't know about, there, there are people that uh, just have a tendency to, to suffer in silence. Um, so I'm lighting our celebration candle in gratefulness that we're all here today, but also for the outpouring of love um, that we do have for one another. We may be small, but we are mighty. And um, with your blessings and thoughts, we can bring uh, a sense of peace to our neighbors and friends. So I like this for peace in our sanctuary, in our church, in our community, uh, as well as peace throughout the world and in the Ukraine. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us wave the peace and the peace, passing of the peace to one another.
<laughs> you get them, Mark. You don't miss one of them, I'll tell you. Let us join together in this morning's call to worship. A voice as deep as the rolling thunder calls out to us. I am your God. I have called you in righteousness. God takes us by the hand and leads us. In covenant with God, we extend light to the world. Let us join in our prayer of invocation. Come, Holy Spirit, to dwell in us and among us. Make us a reflection of your radiance that we might share enough light to make a difference in your world. Where there is injustice, help us as we work to change the minds and hearts of those who benefit from it. Show us again the new possibilities you have in mind for us. May we be a reflection of your peace amidst the frantic business in the world. Hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated.
members and existing members of committees and officers of the church come forward, please. And bring your, um, your bullets, yes.
President and I extend to you the hand of Christian love. Thank you, God. The prophet Isaiah is best known among Christians for his descriptions of the peaceable kingdom and the coming of the Messiah. This chosen servant is described with a variety of images that often appears to foreshadow the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. In all the descriptions of the Messiah found in the Hebrew scriptures, there is this assurance that not only will this chosen one of God bring peace, but justice as well. Our first scripture reading for this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. The Lord says, Here is my servant whom I strengthen, the one I have chosen, with whom I am pleased. I have filled him with my spirit, and he will bring justice to every nation. He will not shout or raise his voice or make loud speeches in the streets. He will not break off a bent reed, nor put out a flickering lamp. He will bring justice to all. He will not lose hope or courage. He will establish justice on earth. Distant lands eagerly wait for his teaching. God created the heavens and stretched them out. He fashioned the earth and all that lives there. He gave life and breath to all its people. And now the servant, or the Lord God, says to his servant, I, the Lord, have called you and given you power to see that justice is done on earth. Through you, I will make a covenant with all peoples. Through you, I will bring light to the nations. You will open the eyes of the blind and set free those who sit in dark prisons. I alone am the Lord, your God. No other God may share my glory. I will not let idols share my praise. The things I predicted have now come true. Now I will tell you of new things, even before they begin to happen. This ends our first reading. seated.
We do have a number of prayer requests to share. From Carol Erickson, a friend, Ron Marsh, praying for recovery. Also for a friend having surgery tomorrow. Prayers for Ron. From Mark McGinnis and Brennan, my mother-in-law has passed and is now with, with our Lord. From Kathy, prayers for Ron Marsh, Rita Stearns, Teresa Johnson, Bob Clifford, and a friend facing surgery. Also for Ron as he recovers. Um, yeah. So uh, Ron's um, Ron's sudden illness came as a shock to a lot of us, and um, and has got many of us reeling and hoping and praying for the best for him and Elaine. <clears throat> um, so thank you all for holding Ron in prayer. Let's come together in spirit of prayer. Gracious God, as we come to you, we know that it is not how much we do for our neighbor, but more how much love we put into our doing. Forgive us when we judge people. It's because when we judge people, we're not loving them. We must grow in love. And to do this, we must go on loving and loving and giving. And giving as your son did for us. Like the old woman at the treasury who gave everything, our giving should not come from our excess, but as she, our giving should come from a willingness to sacrifice. We give of ourselves to the betterment of each other and to the spreading of the gospel. Lord, grant our community a sense of wonder and love. Lift us up. Let us join together in prayer for our loved ones. We don't know what's going to happen one day to the next. We don't know if what happens in the world is going to affect us directly or indirectly. May we come from a place of vulnerability to be open, to be open to your love, to be open to sharing that love with our brothers and sisters and all our siblings in Christ. We pray. We ask that you also hear these, the silent prayers of our hearts and minds. We believe you our three-in-one God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We trust you and know that you are with us in all circumstances and situations. And we thank you for your love. Amen. 
Let us join together in our church's mission statement. Our church exists to cultivate the love of God and our community and to build a deep conviction that we're all beloved, valued people of worth who are devoted to following Jesus and doing God's work. We welcome and seek Christ's living presence in our town and beyond. Our church is a place of worship, inspiration, learning, and discovery. We serve our community and are the arms, hands, and voice of God's love. This morning's offerings will now be received. Let us join together in our offertory prayer of thanksgiving. We pray, O oh God, that our offerings are pleasing to you. We bring them to encourage all who work for justice and peace on our behalf, that they may not grow faint or be crushed by opposition. May the oppressed find healing, the discouraged receive hope, and those who are bound discover freedom through and beyond our efforts. Amen.
All four of the Gospels record the baptism of Jesus by John in the River Jordan. The Gospel, according to Matthew, brings to us an account of the emergence of Jesus at the river, signaling that the time of preparation for the coming of the Messiah is completed. Our Gospel text is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. At that time, Jesus arrived from Galilee and came to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. But John tried to make him change his mind. I ought to be baptized by you, John said, and yet you have come to me. But Jesus answered him, let it be so for now, for in this way we shall do all that God requires. So John agreed. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. Then heaven was open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and lighting on him. Then a voice said from heaven, This is my own dear Son, with whom I am pleased. This ends our Gospel reading. So this is... Um, this is one of my more convoluted sermons. <laughs> I should forewarn you, you're going, to have to, you're going to have to try and stay with me on this. Most religions, regardless of faith traditions, speak of two births. We have our, our first birth, the, the physical birth, the one where you get your body. You're, you're born into the world and now you physically exist. But then the question is, why do I exist? We don't know at birth why we exist, and we won't know for sure until we experience our second birth. Some people haven't experienced that second birth yet. Many people don't know what their life is about. Oftentimes, it's this half of life where we're figuring out what we're going to be when we grow up. What kind of house do I want? Cars. Very, very secular. Um, the Jewish faith tradition has, um, for boys, about 12 or 13 years of age, the bar mitzvah, and that's an initiation rite into the Jewish faith of sorts. And then for, for girls, it's called the bat mitzvah, okay? Um, if you remember, there, there was a gospel story about Jesus um, staying behind at the temple when he was about 12 or 13 years old. So he could talk to the elders and listen to them and ask them questions. And it says all who heard him were amazed at his intelligent answers. So Jesus was trying to grow a little bit outside what he, what he was experiencing. But the thing is, is I, I, don't, I don't think Jesus got it. Or maybe they didn't explain it to him that well. Because um, you'll remember at the end of that, that story, um, uh, Jesus um, never really, um, it, it says that Jesus grew in age and wisdom. So Jesus didn't get it all on well, we know his birthday is not really December 25th, but Jesus didn't get it all the moment he was born, okay? It was something he was destined to do. Jesus had to still grow. Jesus needed that second birth. And that's what he went for. He went to John to be baptized. Now, in our faith tradition, of course, we baptize infants. 
But let's be honest. Infants don't know why they're being baptized. Okay. Some faith traditions say, okay, it's for the forgiveness of original sins. But Jesus could have been baptized anywhere. Well, not really. But um, Jesus could have gone through this initiation, is one term I like to use, um, at any time in his life. But it wasn't until he was ready. And that was 30 years of age. Okay? Jesus was doing what a lot of us do, and what we say a lot of those hippies do. He was trying to find himself. And imagine what that was like when Jesus comes up out of the water and he has a revelation. The heavens are open to him and a dove comes down. Now, we all know that the Holy Spirit isn't really a dove, right? A dove's a bird. But for us, it's important that we, we put something that's visible and understandable to those things that are not necessarily visible and understanding. Hence, we have a dove. We need that ourselves. We need to come up out of the water and hear those words, you are my blessed child. I love you. With you, I'm well pleased. And that's what a lot of us look for, and that's why a lot of us look for that, that spiritual connection that is oftentimes missing in our day-to-day -day life. You see, initiation, or for us, baptism, is something that we, um, that we kind of want to seek. Remember the Native Americans, the, the young men would often go out into the wilderness. Jesus talks about the wilderness all the time. Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. But oftentimes we'd go off, into, or the, the Native Americans would go off into the wilderness so that they could be vulnerable to what God offers they would have to gain strength and wisdom. It's one of those things where you need to seek it. You need to look for that relationship with God because if you don't if you're not looking for it you more than likely won't find it. Now, back in the day, it was primarily, and please, before anybody looks at me funny, because I know you will, back in the day, it was initially men who had to go through initiation rites, because men were the alphas, and men were the caretakers and, and all that. And it was rarely that, that women were the lead of the family, okay? Now let me say this, so you can smile at me again. Women need initiation just as much as men do in today's world. Because women are oftentimes driven as much as men are to, to become successful, breadwinners, the, the, the stalwart of the family. Initiation isn't reserved, baptism isn't reserved 
for just one type of person. We all need it. And can you tell I went way off my script? <laughs> it's a journey. We're called on a journey. We have to willingly accept that ride. One of our problems is ego gets in the way. We, we don't allow ourselves to be vulnerable to each other. We don't want anybody to see us cry. We want to just have this whole air about us that, that kind of shields us. And we forget what it's like to be part of the body of Christ. When one part hurts, the whole body suffers. When one part's good, the whole part's happy. I, you know, we talk about ego. I, I got to tell you a quick story. Um, this isn't in my sermon either, but it, it does exemplify ego at work. I just realized today that it was like 25 years ago. 25 years ago, I was rollerblading. Second time on rollerblades, okay? Now, I'm not graceful, not at all. So the second time on rollerblades, I was way in a parking lot in West Springfield, way in the back, and it was, um, there's nobody around. So I'm going around, I'm going around. I, I didn't fall that many times, so I was really feeling proud of myself. I was doing good. Then I go, you know what? Maybe get some, get some mileage here. I'll go to the other parts of the park. It was called Midnight Park, if you're ever out there. Um, so I, I, I start to leave the parking lot, and I'm going down the driveway from the parking lot. And I'm using the word correctly, down the parking lot. It was a hill. I wasn't thinking when I was going down the parking lot. All of a sudden, I realize I don't know how to stop. Okay, because up there on the flat, it was all let the momentum just slowly die, die down. So I'm going down this hill and I'm going, I'm going to crash. The question is, is where? So I see this green spot, right? And I go, I'm going to crash right there. That looks like a nice, safe, soft landing. So I veered off intentionally, and I crashed, and I knew I hurt myself. <laughs> As it turns out, what happened is I got two compression fractures in my back. Um, but the thing is, this is where ego comes into play. So this is a, a secluded part of the park, and, and I'm laying there, and I'm like in agony, but I hear a car coming. You know, some of you might think, good, right? No, I'm too embarrassed. I took out my water bottle, and as they drove by, I was just laying there drinking my water. <laughs> Ego is not a good thing when it's brought to that excess. It's okay to let people know where you're coming from and how you feel. And remember, again, to, to try and get back on subject, is that we do have a baptism. We do have this baptism, but there's also a time in your life when you come to the understanding that there is more to our lives than just the secular. There is that spiritual part of us that just has to, has to connect with God. And in that way, we connect better with each other. Amen.
time has come for us to go out or go downstairs and have a snack. The time has come for us to live in service to each other, to our God. As the service comes to an end, our service to one another now begins. Go in peace. Amen.